Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is True Wonder Dog, and I'm here today with a guide for Yoshimitsu. Between this game coming out recently and the beta that came out before that, I've had several hours playing this character, and I wanted to share what I think works best with him in my experience, while also combining that with things I've seen from high-level players at tournaments. Now since this is my first guide, I'm likely to miss some things that you all find very important, so please tell me down in the comments what you want to see in future guides. And while you're down there, why not comment what character you want to see next as well? And hey, if you feel like it, why not hit the like button? I mean, it's, it's right there. I mean, you could. If you want to, do it, nerd, do it. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get started. And to start things off, I wanted to talk about what to do in the neutral. How do you want to get in on the opponent? So if you're about this far away, then I think 6-6-A can be a great way to start. Because if you do land that counter hit, then you actually steal some meter from the opponent. And since it is a horizontal, it will catch them trying to sidestep. And it's also rather fast as well, so if they try to interrupt you, you'll likely get that counter hit. So it's an all-around good tool for getting in. Now, if you're a bit further away, you can try 4-4-A. This has a bit more range on it, and you don't scoot in quite as far. And you also get the knockdown as well, which means you can run in and go for a mix-up if you feel like it. So that's also pretty good as well. And of course, you also have a sidestep A. And this will cause a lethal hit, which is really, really awesome. It can be a really good tool. In fact, I don't see many players actually utilize this tool, and it's a very, very good tool. So feel free to use it if the opponent ever tries to step around you. Another good option for getting in can be 6-6-K. Although keep in mind the opponent could sidestep this, but if they do block it, it's pretty good for some frame advantage, and if they don't get up right away, you can catch them with 3-B. So that can also be very good as well. You can combo into that and get some extra damage. It's pretty good for Oki's setup. So this can also be a good tool as well. So in a brief nutshell, those are the ways I recommend getting in with Yoshimitsu. So now let's talk about what to do once you're in there. And before we talk about mix-ups, let's just talk about ways to keep yourself safe. So Yoshimitsu has a third hit for his A string, like this, A-A-A, and his B string also has a third hit as well. And if that third hit connects, he steals some meter and can also land a lethal hit, so it can be a fantastic option. Now, both of these do have their drawbacks though. The third hit of this can be easily ducked under, in fact the whole string can, but the third hit is extra obvious and they could whiff punish you with a wall rising, or they could sweep you, you know, any number of things if they do duck on reaction. So be careful when throwing out that third hit, it can be very risky. And the same can also be said for BBB. The third hit is actually not guaranteed there, the opponent could block it, and they can also sidestep if they block the first two. So it's not a guaranteed string, and they could also block standing. So it's not a guaranteed trick, but it is a good option if the opponent's respecting your normals, you can use AAA, or you can do BBB, and if they block it, you're still in a pretty good position. And if you get a counter hit, you can steal some meters, so there are some benefits to throwing this one out. But that's just the stuff to keep you safe, so let's go ahead and talk about the juicy bits now. What about the mix-ups that Yoshimitsu has? Well, he has quite a few. Let's talk about the safe ones first. So if you were to do 1k, it's got pretty good range, and it hits low. So you can check your opponent's shins every now and then and get some free damage if they're not expecting it. And if you want something a little bit riskier that leads to more damage, then you can go to a full crouch state and then do 3k. This will sweep the opponent, and then you can do forward AB to go into his flea stance, and then if you press 6 twice, you'll run in on him. So basically you forward dash will end this state, and you get a little bit extra damage, and you steal some meter too. So that combo altogether looks like this. So you hit the opponent low and got a short combo and also some meter, so it's a pretty good thing. Now the problem is, this move is very, very unsafe on block. If the opponent blocks this, they can hit you with a full combo, so be very careful when using it, it's got some huge risk to it. And there's also one more fairly safe low option, which is 1BA. This ends with a mid, so if they stay crouching, they'll get caught, and if they sidestep, it also has a good chance of catching them as well, so it's a pretty good way to hit your opponent low without very much risk. And then if you're a little bit further away but still want to score low, there's of course 1A. This has pretty good range and hits low, and if you space it correctly, it can be fairly safe because you're so darn far away. Now it is still punishable, but it's just a bit tougher to do. And next up we have the creme de la creme, one of Yoshimitsu's best moves that's so good in fact it's almost a crutch, and that's his 3B. There's a lot of things that makes this move fantastic. First off, it's a mid-launcher, right? If they're crouching, it catches them, you can launch them, and get a pretty decent combo afterwards. If they try to punish it, you can end it with B again, and it can sometimes catch them trying to do something. It'll sometimes punish them. And then if you hold down B, it puts him into his dragonfly stance. And if you hit the opponent, then of course you can do the A follow-up, and that's good for a little combo extension. And if they're near the ledge, it almost guarantees a ring out, so it's very good for that. Go into the air, whoop, and there you go, sends them flying very, very far. So it's a great way to land ring outs near the edge. So it's an all-around great stream. But it's not just good for starting off combos, it can also be a good way to end combos as well. Because you can still hold the button and then go into the dragonfly for a mix-up. 
So let's go ahead and talk about the Dragonfly mix-ups real quick. So there aren't too many. If the opponent tries to press buttons and they're at a frame disadvantage, you can do A, and this can catch them for a counter hit, pretty good damage. If you want to go for a low mix-up, then you can use K. But be warned, it no longer leads to a full combo anymore in this game, unlike Soul Calibur 5, so there's not as much reason to do it, except for, you know, scaring the opponent, making them check their feet. But if they do block it, they can hit you with a full combo, so it's very risky, and the reward's not that high. It's still an option if you want to make them crouch, because then maybe you can catch them with B. And B does lead to an actual full combo, so if I was to land that, for example, let me go into my flight. If I land this, I can then go into this state and go for a low. So that's still a good option. The B option is also safe on block. It's very safe on block. It might actually be plus. I almost do want to think that it's plus. It's pretty dang good. So to summarize, 3B is great for starting combos, it's great for ending combos, and it leads to mix-ups. So it's an all-around fantastic move. Now it's not without its drawbacks, right? You could sidestep it. For example, it is a vertical, so the opponent could sidestep right around it. And it lasts for a pretty good amount of time, so if they sidestep it, they could launch you for a full combo. So you don't just want to throw it out willy-nilly, even though it is very, very useful. And this attack 3B combined with his full crouch 3K is one of the things that makes Yoshimitsu so good up close. He basically has a 50-50, especially online when it's that much harder to react. Because if you catch him low, you get a full combo and some meter. If you catch him crouching, then you get a more damaging combo, but not as much meter, obviously. You still gain a little bit of meter for landing the hit, but you don't steal it like you would with the low combo starter. So Yoshimitsu basically does have a true 50-50, especially online. Now one of Yoshimitsu's biggest weaknesses, in my opinion, is that after a combo, he leaves the opponent pretty far away sometimes. Right around here. And it can be tough sometimes to get that footing back, because once you get in, the opponents can stand up, and they can do a wake-up attack, so it's a bit tougher to start your offense. So I wanted to cover a couple tools that I think are great for getting back in. The first of which is 6-6-A-B. This attack hits overhead, so it catches them if they're crouching, and you can get a short combo afterwards. So if I hit them, I can get a little follow-up. So that's pretty great. And if I want to, there's also a mix-up built in. So during the actual animation, I can press 2-B. And now it's a low. Not nearly as much damage and doesn't knock down or anything, but it's still a pretty solid option that you have. And it doesn't have to actually be 6-6-A-B. It could be 9-9-A-B, so that's forward stepping up, or it could be 3-3-A-B. So you can sidestep while doing it as well, and this can help you track people. And that's not a move I meant to do, but you know what, we're going to talk about that next, so that's fantastic. This move is unblockable. This is 9-A-B. So 9-A plus B, and then to do it immediately, you hold down as soon as you go into the air. So you hold 2 on the D-pad, and you come down almost immediately, and it's unblockable. This can be a fantastic mix-up after knocking the opponent down, and when they're further away, it's a good way to close that distance. Now, it's not going to work that many times. In fact, I don't recommend doing it more than once against a good player. But after one mix-up or two, you can do it, and they're not going to see it coming sometimes. And it leaves them in a stun state, so you get a little bitty combo afterwards as well. So those are just a couple ways that I think are great for closing in the distance on the opponent. So next, let's talk about Yoshimitsu's defense. Even though Yoshimitsu is a mix-up master, every now and then the opponent's going to be pressuring you. So it's important to know the ways to escape that. So first up, we have 2A. This is universal for most characters on the roster. It's a very fast attack, and you crouch a little bit, so it can whiff under certain highs. Now, of course, if the opponent's doing verticals, then a horizontal will not work. It will still catch you crouching. So what you want to do in that instance is sidestep and do B. So that's 8-8-B or 2-2-B and this leads to a short combo. So you could do 3B and get some extra damage there. Or you could hold down 3B, and now you're in a mix-up state. You can go for a low, or you can go for the mid. And you can crumple them in that state and get some extra damage. So you get a little bit of a mix-up too if you want to go for that. And next up we have a move that is very unique to Yoshimitsu, and that's his 2AB just frame. This swift punch to the crotch is not only very, very fast, but it also ducks Yoshimitsu as well, so it avoids certain high attacks. So it's a very fantastic move. I'm not quite sure how fast it is in this iteration of Soul Calibur, but in past games it's been a very abnormally fast move. Now in case you're not quite sure how to pull off a just frame, you basically slide your fingers across the buttons. So you press 2 or you press down, and then right after you slide your finger from A to B, in a really quick motion, just like that. So 2A, B, just like that. And it's a fantastically fast move. It's great for escaping pressure because it's quick and it avoids high attacks as well. So it's an all-around fantastic move. And if you manage to land a counter hit, it actually puts the opponent in a momentary crumple state. Now, you can't really get anything off of it, they're too far away to actually get anything. However, if the opponent's near a wall, then I do believe it's good for combo extension too, in certain scenarios. And since it's much easier to do in this game than it was in 5, I recommend abusing the hell out of it, it's a fantastic move. 
And last but not least, we have Yoshimitsu's Flash. This is done by pressing A and K on the controller, and this move is a bit odd, but also very reliable. If the opponent hits you anywhere on Yoshimitsu's sword, then they'll be knocked back. So it's basically a second guard impact that Yoshimitsu has access to. However, the opponent does have to hit the sword, so keep that in mind. If they aim for your feet, or your shins, or your knee, then it's not gonna work. And sometimes it can even hit by the sword, and it still won't work in some situations. It's not the most reliable option, but it is very fast, and it has a pretty big parry window as well. So it's more reliable than it initially appears. And on top of that mix-up, Yoshimitsu also has a wonderful gimmick. Unlike most characters who must enter Soul Charge in order to do their Brave Edge attacks, or just their Gauge attacks in general, Yoshimitsu can actually access many of these outside of that Soul Charge state. So he can do them even though he hasn't actually like committed to that full bar of meter, he can still do it. So that's just one more thing that makes Yoshimitsu amazing. So real quick, I want to run through all the Soul Charge moves that don't require him to actually be in Soul Charge. So first up, we have AA, A plus B. Not only does this attack do good damage, but it's also a fairly safe option. In fact, it might also be plus on block. And if they do block it, it has a break effect to it, so it's going to do some damage to their guard, so that's also fantastic. So even though the damage isn't guaranteed without a counter hit, it's just such a risk-free option for the most part. So it's definitely a great tool to throw out in the neutral if you have some bar to burn. And next up, we have 6k AB. This can be a fantastic way to add some extra damage to the end of your combos. So if I was to land a sidestep combo, I can use some meter and get a little bit extra damage, and that's a pretty beefy amount of damage for a simple launch combo. And that's what this is definitely good for. So if you have the meter to burn and you want to do a little bit extra damage, this is a great option. And Yoshimitsu even has a wall rising brave edge, so if you duck a high or simply block an unsafe low, you can do wall rising A, A plus B, and get some more damage than you normally would. You get a full combo afterwards, that's pretty cool. Now you do have to time it a little bit, it's a bit tougher than just getting a simple 3B launcher, but it still leaves us some pretty good damage, and it's great for punishing unsafe lows or ducking under high attacks. Plus, it leaves you in the Manji state, so if you don't want to go for the damage, you can still go for the mix-up. And of course, that can be a good option as well. And of course, there's also his Door Knocker Brave Edge, which actually comes in two different flavors. So if you land the counter hit, this will actually combo. It's 6B, B, A plus B. And if you land the counter hit, that's a full combo, and you can do some pretty crazy stuff afterwards. You can do 3B. And the reason I said it comes in two flavors is because you can actually do three hits instead and then burn that. You don't get nearly as much damage, but I guess it can be a safer option, I assume? Because the third hit does knock down, so you could just burn that instead and keep yourself a bit more safe. I don't think it's worth the meter in my opinion, the damage definitely isn't worth it, but it is an option that you do have. And then there's one more Brave Edge that I don't find super useful most of the time, but it's his 4A and then AB. So if you do that correctly, I seem to keep messing it up, then you get this, which launches them on counter hit. It's actually not a true string. It has to be on counter hit, but if you do land it, it's one of the craziest ways to ring out the opponent. It can get pretty ridiculous. So let me go ahead and set the opponent to counter hit here and just watch this. It sends them flying. Now it wasn't quite far enough to get the ring out, but could you imagine getting sent flying that far and getting rung out for it? It would be pretty ridiculous. And that is what this move can be for. It just sends the opponent flying in that direction. And I think that's basically it for his Brave Edges that are available outside of Soul Charge, so now let's talk about why you would want to use Soul Charge. Although, most of the time I think you're better off spending on his Critical Edge, and I'll talk about that more later on. But basically, his moves that don't require Soul Charge are already fantastic, combined with how good his Critical Edge is, that I don't recommend going into Soul Charge most of the time. But let's talk about a few reasons why it might be fruitful. First up is something a little bit bizarre. Despite Yoshimitsu not being a grappler, his throws get a bit of a buff. They also look entirely different. So that's not a ton more damage, it's only 10 more damage, right? It's 60 instead of 50. And this one is also a little bit more damage. Now the animation is completely different, but his forward throw and back throw do a bit more damage as well. So that's cool. That's one cool thing about Soul Charge. If you think the throw will kill, maybe you want to pop it and go for those unblockables, which already makes Yoshimitsu even scarier, because he already has the 50-50, right? And then on top of that, he has throws that do more damage now too. Another big reason you'll see most people do Soul Charge, myself included, is they get this unblockable B from his Manji Dragonfly. So if I do the vertical and just keep mashing it, I get all this juicy unblockable damage and I steal some meter too in the process. So that's just icing on the cake. That's a lot of the time why you'll see people pop Soul Charge is that unblockable is just so scary because now the opponent has to sidestep. They basically have to, otherwise they will get caught with that. They can't block it. So it's just a terrifying option he gets in Soul Charge. And one more amazing reason to use Soul Charge that honestly feels a bit cheap is Yoshimitsu can fly even higher, so 
If you do the Manji Dragonfly input a second time, he now flies so high that a lot of characters can't even hit him without specific moves. And then he flies down with an unblockable B attack as well, which can be extended for a little bit more damage. And that can make Yoshimitsu very, very scary. And while he's up there, he can also do a suicide. He can do his seppuku while up there, and his seppuku up there does way more damage. So this is A and K at the same time. And if you manage to land it, it's a ton of damage. Now it's tough to land because he flies forward in pretty big increments. He doesn't just move forward gradually. He moves forward in pretty beefy amounts. But if you land it, tons of damage. Look at that. It's like 75%. So if you do want to risk it, it's a ton of damage. It really is. It's a lot of damage. Now, of course, there are a lot more things Yoshimitsu can do while he's up there, but that's the main thing I see people want to do. So, for example, if you do K, he can actually stagger the opponent, and that can lead to a combo starter. Or he can actually, um, with B plus K, he can land in his flea stance, and then he also has a bunch of other stuff as well. But honestly, with Yoshimitsu, there's so many things that you'll never use at all, despite them being on his move list. So I don't want to cover absolutely everything since you're rarely going to use it, especially in a competitive setting. But please do make sure to go into training mode and check out the move list if you're serious about maining Yoshimitsu because there might be something weird and unorthodox there that you do enjoy using. I'm just not going to include it in this guide because it's honestly a lot of it's secondary. You're not going to use it most of the time. So with all that said, let's go ahead and cover what else he can do while in Soul Charge that I think is useful. So he has 3 AA, which can be pretty good. On counter hit, he flips the opponent over and gets some pretty dang good damage, and he steals some meter too in the process. And this can actually be a great way to add damage after landing a crumple state. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. It's definitely supposed to work there. That's one of the reasons you would actually do that. Okay, there we go. So you get some beefy damage after a counter hit crumple, and he steals some meter in the process, so that can be a fantastic option. And by the way, that does still happen even without being in soul charge, so you can still get a little bit of extra damage. It's not quite as much, but I think you do still meter too as well. So it's great in Soul Charge or out of Soul Charge. It can be a fantastic option. It's just that during Soul Charge, you always get the follow-up, whereas you won't always get the follow-up if you're not in Soul Charge. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about his Critical Edge, which honestly might be one of the best Critical Edges in the game. And the reason I say that is because it whiff punishes basically everything. So if the opponent ever whiff punishes any move from any distance and you're far enough away, it doesn't matter, it will catch them. Anywhere on screen, this move will reach them if they're pressing a button. Now, there are some rare instances where I've seen the Yoshimitsu player get hit out of the sky, but it's super rare. It's so rare that I honestly don't even recommend worrying about it. If you see the opponent press a button and it's a slow recovering move, pop Critical Edge and get some free meter. This thing is just amazing. Not only does it whiff punish from anywhere on screen, but it's actually plus on block. So if I get Grow to block this, I can still press buttons afterward. It's still my turn. He can't actually do anything there. That's how ridiculous this critical edge is. Now, the trade-off is that it's very tough to combo into. Most of the time, you just can't combo into this thing. So if I was to do his regular 3B launcher, it's not going to combo. I messed up there. I have to wait a bit. Okay, so if I try and do this, it won't combo at all. So it's very tough to combo into. Now, you actually can. If you do 4-4-K, his donkey kick, you actually can combo into it. Now, is the damage worth it? Not really, in my opinion. But hey, if you feel like being flashy and you want to go for it, who am I to stop you? Follow your dreams, kid. However, most of the time, you're going to use it for whiff punishing. Now, keep in mind, it's also very slow on startup as well. It's one of the slower critical edges in the game in that regard. It's got very long startup, but that whiff punish factor is just nuts. And even if they block it, it's still your turn. So it's a very fantastic critical edge. And last but not least, why not include all the different ways Yoshimitsu can commit suicide? Now we already covered the flying suicide, which does crazy damage, but one of the more immediately viable options is to just do 6-6 into A plus K. If you hold it down for long enough, he does a unblockable, which hurts himself as well, but it does way more damage to the opponent. And it has follow-ups, although I don't recommend doing it. If you press AK again, he'll stab a second time which will guarantee killing the opponent if they get up right away, but if they stay down, it'll whiff. If they crouch, it'll whiff. If they roll around, it'll whiff, so I don't recommend doing it most of the time. If you stab yourself facing forward with just down AK, you can keep mashing A and you'll spin, and this can do some minor damage to the opponent, and it is unblockable, just like all the suicides, but honestly, Yoshimitsu takes more damage himself in this case, so I don't recommend ever going for it. And of course, you can also commit suicide while sitting down in his Indian stance. However, your only option for getting damage here is to press A for the follow-up, and even though it does chunky damage, Yoshimitsu's taken a lot of damage himself already, and the opponent's probably going to interrupt you since they just watched you stab yourself and they have all day to hit you before that follow-up even comes out. 
So honestly, the only viable ways to ever commit seppuku in this game, in my opinion, is a 6-6 AK, or the super high in the air flying AK. So I guess what I'm saying is be nice to Yoshimitsu, okay? It's his health bar, not yours. Alright everyone, and that's basically it for my Yoshimitsu beginner's guide. Once again, I did not cover everything. In fact, I left out the lethal hits, not only because they're very situational, but because the game itself tells you how to do them and why you would do them. So I don't see a reason to really reiterate it here. Plus, Yoshimitsu has a gigantic move list as well, so I definitely left out a lot of what he can do because I find it very situational and rather unorthodox. So once again, I do recommend going into training mode and checking out that move list because there's a lot to discover and maybe that stuff works for you, but I find that it's just not very good in a competitive setting. But at any rate, I'm starting to ramble, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, then please consider leaving a like down below, it really does help me out a lot and I do appreciate it. And once again, please recommend which character you want a beginner's guide for next. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that bell for future videos. Make sure to come back next time and as always, stay underdogs.